Everyone's scars and bruises are manifested in their childhood. And you can see the toughest, most successful people break in an instant. My name is Alianka Larianov. I'm 31 years old. Um, and I consider myself a person who wears a ton of different hats, but the labels, if I am to use some, that I'll put on myself are host, producer, storyteller, uh, social engineer. I'm the founder of Women Workshops, and I host a podcast called Tell Your Story, um, and I'm just a curious soul. Both of my parents were athletes. Um, they were both born in the Soviet Union. My father was a professional ice hockey player, and my mother was an ice dancer, a figure skater, so she danced um, as a figure skater. They met on the ice, kind of, in a way. My mom attended one of his games, and the story goes that he winked at her from the ice, and they fell in love. Um, and. We spent the first two years of my life in Russia, and then my father relocated to North America to pursue a career in the National Hockey League. So I grew up more or less in and around a nice hockey rink. Um, and by the time I moved to Detroit, which was 95, um, I had lived in four different countries. Um, I had been to multiple different schools. And athleticism, as it pertained to uh, skating, was not something that my parents pushed me to do, but they did want me to have that upbringing because there's something about sport that really teaches you um, about uh, resiliency and being organized and understanding your body and your emotions and just having kind of a healthy lifestyle. So tennis was my sport. Um, I started playing that when I was six or seven. Because my parents were athletes, there was this emphasis on working out and eating healthy and the ways in which Americans that were in my vicinity ate at the time was not acceptable, so junk food was not allowed. Um, so I always had this complex around food. and. I became aware of my body at a very young age, not in the way of it functioning as a body that allows me to live, but as a body that looked a certain way. And so when I started gaining weight, I was more or less told, you know, either work out more um, or cut back the things that you're eating. And that initially was just cutting back, I suppose, working out more. But as it happens with an eating disorder, there's always this tipping point that occurs where all of a sudden you start to get a high from being hungry and you start getting a high from getting results and you start getting a high from the reaction that people give you. And it became this disease, this disease to please. I had been battling with an eating disorder for seriously for 10 years. And so last year, April 16th, 2017, I finally got to a place where uh, the doctor in the ER said, you have a choice, you either can live or die. Um, and something in that moment where I recognized that my brain wasn't functioning the way that it had been, I had slurred speech, I was forgetting things, um, my organs were more or less dying. I just had that aha awakening moment where, oh my God, you know, this could all be taken away from me and began my recovery. And I think through that process, I started questioning, well, who am I? And how did I get here? And what does this all mean? And why was I this person for 10 years? And did I actually want to be a broadcaster and a host? Did I want to be a producer? Did I act the way that I did around men because that's who I am or, that's, or because it's my learned behavior? And so I really felt that everything was stripped away from me and I just had a blank canvas 
and I had to start painting and experimenting. And at first that was terrifying, of course, because you're like, what if I do this wrong? And then there's a sense of freedom where you start kind of sketching and you're like, oh, I see something forming there. Oh, it, it actually feels and looks nice. And you start gaining that confidence and through that practice of, of flexing that muscle, you start to understand that you can be the creator of your life. And um, all of a sudden, all of these things kind of opened up in front of me. first women's circle was at the end of September 2017 and this March 20 March 25th 2018 will have been the 25th one so their women's circle men gather essentially the same concept in that it's a small group of men or women um, in circle having a conversation about what it means to be a modern human society and it varies the topics vary all the time the way that I see it is it's a space for the unknown you know we're so used to being in control of everything if we don't have control over something we can look it up you know we no longer trust our intuition for anything because we don't need to we have our phones that will provide us directions, they will provide us food, they will provide us lovers, <laughs> they will provide us friends. I mean, literally anything that you want. And so within these workshops, what ends up happening is you don't know where the location is going to be and you're not going to know until the day of. You don't know who's going to be there. So you have to have the bravery to show up and say, I don't know anybody here or oh my God, that person goes to work with me. How am I going to be vulnerable now? Um, and you don't know what we're going to be talking about. So you can't come in with a shield. You can't come in with your armor and say, I'm educated in this subject matter, and so therefore I'm going to show up as my ego. You literally have to take off your guard and just be. But the thing that I teach within these workshops is that at the end of the day, no matter what I say, you still have control over your story. And I think especially in what is happening politically and in our country today at large, we have this movement where we're seeing women speak out more. Um, and it's a tricky place because just because everyone's speaking doesn't mean you have to. And just because we're seeing a movement for women to feel empowered doesn't mean we can forget about an entire other gender. And so for me, there's a disconnect that is occurring right now where we find ourselves so connected because of technology and yet we're so disconnected from others and from ourselves. And so the goal really is to create conversation, connection and community and to make people feel like they're seen and heard and that they matter. Mm -hmm.